Sooner or later, every era or series of Godzilla jumps into the deep end of anime. The Showa era had Godzilla vs. Hedora. Heisei immediately tripped into Godzilla vs. Biollante, almost everything in Millennium, and the current Reiwa, literally so, with Singular Point. The Monsterverse committed to it in GVK, so GXK is like Godzilla cannonballing into a kiddie pool. Godzilla x Kong, the New Empire, takes place three years after the events of Godzilla vs. Kong. The Hollow Earth has officially been ventured into with outposts established by Monarch for research. Kong is searching for any possible living kin, and Godzilla has a rage murder boner. One day, during a trek in the Hollow Earth, Kong stumbles across Donkey's extended family, including Diddy and Lanky. Problem is, Lanky is kind of a dictator and rules over all the others with his trusty whip and gigantic Shimo, the mother of all titans and maker of snow cones. After Kong is forced to retreat and almost loses his arm, the humans, because they exist in this movie, equip Kong with his own power glove before he goes to the surface to beg Godzilla for help. Now it is up to Kong and Godzilla to go work together to stop Lanky from expanding his control of the Hollow Earth and conquering the surface. Alright, there is no sugar coding this one, it's bad. The narrative is a hodgepodge of scattered ideas requiring more time to explore than the duration of the film allows. As you probably gathered, Godzilla x Kong is a misleading title, as Godzilla is on screen about as much as in 2014. This is a Kong movie first, and the human characters follow him and primarily just push the plot along to the next major fight, all the while occasionally flipping back to see what Godzilla's doing, which is often shortening the new monster roster. Kong's search for others of his kind is handled in an interesting way, as the scenes have no dialogue, just actions for audiences to follow, and when the film is like this, it's good, similar to the first third of Riddick from 2013. The complications come in when the humans get involved. The advanced technology returns and it's nuttier than before, with giant monster-specific armor and off-screen teleportation as characters fast travel across the Hollow Earth like later season Game of Thrones. This highlights a failure of the MonsterVerse. We are five movies in and we know little about this world. How the different nations have reacted to the Titans, how the world economy Economies have shifted in response, where the Titans are located, and more. The MonsterVerse is perfectly set up to follow Pacific Rim's initial approach, but hasn't committed. Everything from character motivations to technological achievements pop up out of nowhere to push the plot along. What little interaction we receive is as far as it goes, and it doesn't deliver. The podcaster, little girl, and adoptive mom return, and that's about as much as I can tell you because I don't remember their names. Podcast Bro is just as annoying and weirdly the only one who can understand any of the information brought up to him. Ewe Girl starts off complaining about not fitting in on the surface world before she's elevated to the one girl who can save us all status. The adoptive mom is the exact same and does nothing of importance. We're even introduced to an entire tribe of Ewe inside of the Hollow Earth, and while it results in an exposition dump adding to the lore of the world, we're given no real time to learn anything from them as the plot practically shoves us into the next moment of the story. And notice Billy Mobby Brown ain't here, because I called it, Netflix kept her on a tight leash, in this case, Damsel. Now you might be curious, what about the girl's extended family? No luck there either, they're all mute. They're less vocal than the Protoss, which is another problem. Obviously characters need to communicate for both the movie and audience, but they do so for the monsters and Iwi as well. I couldn't hear myself think, so when we flip back to the monster action, it's a reprieve. There has to be something you liked, right? Well, yeah, the monster action is the one thing this series has done well. 2014 was the platform to build upon, King of the Monsters perfected this, and each installment after has elevated the fights to kaiju cage matches. Of course, physics went out the window when Godzilla and Kong pummeled each each other while surfing on a fucking carrier, so if you want that Showa-era kid smashing toys together kind of fun, then this movie will scratch that itch. <laughs> Though I should remark, there is a moment that had most of the theater and I rocking in our seats with laughter and cheers, so there is that. Just don't complain when there isn't anything else to discuss. Even the new additions to the MonsterVerse are unremarkable. Lanky Kong is nothing special, he's just an evil Kong complete with a weapon. Shimo is by far the most interesting of the original monsters, sure. She's enormous, and her physical design is the strongest among the Titans as a Lizzo-sized member of the Lin Kuei that likes to wear coral blue number two semi-gloss lipstick. Even so, she's just 
Ice Godzilla playing second fiddle to an already uninteresting monster. So there you go. I personally enjoy GXK, but it has shockingly little to discuss, as it's a weak sequel to the already hollow GVK. The human characters are worthless and offer nothing to the audience. The CGI and monster action is great. The foundation for the world building is there, but no real attempt to expand upon it. There is even less interest in the new monsters, as that list is shortened and classics are teased, such as the Titanus Gojira that ate a star. So my inner child is hopeful to see my personal favorite monster on screen, but I'm also enough of a realist to acknowledge it will probably be another sequel with fewer brain cells than Hedorah. All right, honey, let's get a move on. It's about time we head into town and prep for our next destination. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.